When you're driving at night or sitting in traffic, there's one thing you'll always see, the glow of red lights from the cars ahead of you. No matter the brand, model, or country, every vehicle shares that same color on its rear end. But have you ever stopped to think about why that is? Why red of all colors? Why not blue, green, or something brighter like yellow? In this video, we're diving into the science, history, and psychology behind a question most people overlook. We're answering why are rear lights always red and breaking it down in a way that actually makes sense, right here on History of Simple Things. To understand why red became the global default, we have to start with biology. Our eyes aren't equally sensitive to all colors. Red light has a longer wavelength, which scatters less than colors like blue or violet. That gives it a visual advantage, especially in low-light conditions. Even at night, when visibility is reduced, red light stays relatively clear and noticeable. That's important when you're driving at high speeds and need to recognize what the car ahead of you is doing. It helps prevent accidents, especially in fog, rain, or darkness. And here's something even more interesting. Red doesn't affect your night vision as harshly as white or blue light does. Pilots, soldiers, and astronomers have used red light for decades because it preserves what's called scotopic vision, your eye's ability to adapt to low light. So, when you're driving at night and the car in front hits the brakes, that red light gives you a warning without temporarily blinding you. Even beyond the science, color psychology plays a huge role. Red has always been the go-to color for caution, danger, and stopping. Think about stop signs, emergency buttons, and alarms. They're almost always red. Humans have developed a subconscious association between red and pay attention. When you see a red light on the road, your brain doesn't have to process or interpret anything. It just reacts and that split-second response can be life-saving. This isn't limited to cars. Red has long been used in maritime and rail transport as a signal to stop. The automotive industry simply adopted a system the world was already familiar with. When cars started becoming more common in the early 1900s, it made sense to stick to a color people already recognized as a warning. When cars were first introduced, there were no set rules about lights. Some early vehicles used kerosene lanterns on the back, yes, actual small lamps with red-tinted glass. Others used whatever color was available. The problem? Chaos. Imagine driving at night in the 1910s or 1920s. There are barely any street lights, roads aren't well marked, and every vehicle has different lights. Some used red, some used white, some had no lights at all. That confusion led to a growing number of accidents and governments realized laws were needed. By the 1920s and 1930s, the US, Europe, and other parts of the world began passing regulations requiring red rear lights. Brake lights were also introduced around that time, and they too were made red to keep things consistent. Eventually, car manufacturers around the globe adopted the standard. Red is unique on the spectrum because it rarely gets mistaken for other lights on the road. Headlights are white or bluish. Turn signals are amber or yellow. Emergency lights can be blue, white, or red depending on the country. Street and traffic lights mix green, amber, and red. If rear lights were any other color, especially something like white or yellow, it would get confusing very fast. At night, you need to instantly know which direction a car is facing. Red tells you clearly, this is the back of the vehicle. If you see red lights getting bigger, you know you're getting closer. That instant clarity is critical at high speeds, 
where even a few milliseconds of hesitation can cause a collision. A lot of people don't realize that there are two different types of rear lights, tail lights and brake lights. Tail lights are the dim red lights that turn on with your headlights. Brake lights are the brighter red lights that turn on when you press the brake pedal. The reason both use the same color is consistency. The only difference is intensity. So even if someone's headlights are off during the day, their brake lights will still shine bright red when they slow down. Some modern cars use LED lights with multiple levels of brightness, but they stick to the same hue to prevent confusion. Turn signals are a little different because they're not universal in color. In the US, rear turn signals can be either red or amber. In Europe and most of Asia, they're required to be amber to distinguish them from brake lights. Rear fog lights mainly found in Europe, are also red but brighter than tail lights. They're used during heavy fog or rain to improve visibility for drivers behind you. Despite these variations, the one constant is that the standard always-on rear lights and brake lights remain red. Before new cars are approved for mass production, their lighting systems are heavily tested. Engineers study how visible lights are from different angles, distances, and weather conditions. Research consistently shows that red remains the most reliable and recognizable color for signaling braking and presence on the road. Also, red LEDs perform better at longer distances compared to other colors. They cut through fog and dust more effectively. This is why even high-end luxury brands continue sticking with red instead of experimenting with alternative colors. Next time you're driving behind someone at night or tapping your brakes during traffic, you'll know there's more to those glowing red lights than just aesthetics. It's science, safety, history, psychology, and global law, all working together to keep roads predictable and safer. So the answer to why are rear lights always red isn't just one reason. It's a combination of biology, engineering, tradition, regulation, and human instinct. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.